Hello friends, in this video we will discuss about the electron beam welding. This process is uh, not a very new process. Way back in 1949, a German phys physicist known as Karl Heinz developed this technique. Now, the discovery of uh, electron beam welding is very interesting. While working with his electron microscope, he noticed that the specimen which was being examined was get getting vaporized the moment he increased the power of the microscope. Now he found that by regulating the power of the specimen, uh, power the specimen melts and then uh, resolidifies back back to its uh, solid state. From this, he got the idea to weld metal using electron beams. So we know electrons are negatively charged entities which revolve around an atomic nucleus. And when we provide any type of energy in the atoms, the uh, atoms, the balance electrons gets emitted as free electrons. So in electron beam welding, we use these emitted electrons to do the welding process. So let us now try to understand the physics behind the electron emission in details. In normal bulbs, we have a tungsten filament. So when the switch is put on, electricity flows through this filament. Tungsten offers huge resistance to the flow of electricity through it. And as a result, this uh, energy gets converted into heat and light. Similarly, in electron beam welding, we have a cathode. The cathode is nothing but a tungsten filament. So when uh, electricity pa passes through the cathode, free electrons are liberated. So millions of such free electrons are used to weld the work piece, work pieces. Now, one thing we have to understand is that energy emitted from a bulb is actually uh, scattered in all directions. But to weld metal, we need focused energy. That means millions of electrons should fall on a small area. Okay, so uh, let us see how we can achieve this. Suppose we want to weld these two work pieces. So first we will introduce an electron gun from which the electron will be electrons will be emitted. It is basically a filament which is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. So when current passes through the filament, millions and millions of electrons will start coming out of the electron gun. Now to accelerate the electrons, these electrons and to make them flow along a uh, unidirection, a positive terminal that is an anode is introduced. As a result of this anode, a pot potential difference is set up in between the cathode and the anode which makes the electrons flow at a very high velocity. After this, a converging lens is introduced with fo which focuses all the beam of the electrons into a small constricted zone. After this, the uh, light beam is made to pass through a deflecting coil. These uh, deflecting coils are nothing but magnetic lenses. It is through this deflecting coil that we can control the beam and make it fall in regions of our choice. Now finally, the beam falls on the workpiece. The uh, workpiece is uh, actually kept inside a vacuum chamber. Vacuum is maintained so that the electron beam does not interact with air particles. If the beam interacts with air particles, the velocity of the electron beam will drop and a portion of the ray will get deviated. Okay, so now talking about the advantages, this is a very clean process with no smoke or sputter. Since the fusion takes place over a very narrow zone, the heat affected zone is also very ne negligible. Then we can weld mat materials like metals like tungsten, nickel, uh, etc., which have a very high melting point. And finally, this is a very fast process. However, this process is very expensive and um, expensive as the maintenance of vacuum chamber is very complicated and thus skilled labor is required to operate it. So I hope you like this video. For more such informative videos, please subscribe Megvidya. Thank you.